His name is Gareth And he rips bits His name is Gareth Hence why it's Gareth's Hello Yes I got all your emails and comments about my beard And uh I hear you. It'll come back. I know you all love it, so it'll happen. Don't you worry about a goddamn thing. All right, let's start this shit, shall we? Here we go. Ah, it's fun to be back. Good evening and welcome. This is Gareth's Improvised Stand-Up Comedy. Now, the way this works is people send in suggestions that I haven't seen, and I riff on them live for your pleasure. My name is Gareth. I riff. It's Gareth's. And if you're watching on YouTube, which you people are, please subscribe and hit that little bell there. Thank you kindly. Um, I will get some announcements eventually, but let's get to the first segment, which is Riffs Just In. Every week, I riff on three crazy news stories picked out by my producer. Let us start this shit. Okay, far, far, oh my God. Farmer pleads, uh, part of me wishes you could see these in real time with me. Uh, farmer pleads guilty to putting dead animals on late neighbor's gravesite while disguised in woman's wig. Um, you know, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I think I feel like in the 1950s, a wig was sufficient, you know? Like, people would be like, well, what did she look like? Or what did they look like? You'd be like, she had long hair. I'd be like, it was a woman. You know, but just, you can't just, I mean, also, if you see the picture of this guy, he's in overall, like, he could not look more like a farmer. Like, if you saw this guy in a wig, you would be like, I don't know who it is, but I'm probably not going to fuck it. Uh, you know, he's just, and he's five, he's, sm I mean, it, misdemeanor defacing objects of public respect is what he got. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, uh, it's... And it's also so weird to go after, like, what kind of feud did you have with your neighbor where your neighbor dies and you're still fucking with him? Like, what an asshole. Let it go. Let the neighbor go. Let this feud die. This feels like it's the end of this Zac Efron, Seth Rogen movie, Neighbors, where it's just like, when does the bleeding end? This dude is taking animal corpses and throwing it on his dead ex-neighbor's <laughs> grave. What did your neighbor do? I mean, bushes can only go over fences so much, you know? But you're like, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put on a long hair, blonde hair, and then I'm just going to throw carcasses on Dan's grave. Fuck Dan. What a prick. Um, it's a lot. Uh, oh, and his name is Joseph Allen Stroud. Not that that matters, but there you go. Uh, rip repeatedly left dead animals at the grave is what it says on the news. So this is like, a, this is, he was like addicted to this. He was like every night he was like, oh God, I'm so tired, but I got to go put that raccoon on dad's grave. He's an asshole. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, in Syria, militias armed by the Pentagon fight those armed by the CIA. Well, it was a matter of time until America is fighting America on foreign soil. It was bound to happen. I mean, if you occupy enough areas, eventually you'll be like, wait, those are Americans. Be like, those are Americans. Well, what are you doing? Well, we're the CIA. Who are you guys? We're the Pentagon. Well, what are you doing? Well, we just gave a bunch of these guys guns and, and we're trying to... Start a proxy war. You're not going to fucking believe this. What? We're starting a fucking proxy war too. Shut up. No, we are. No, we're starting a proxy war in Syria. This is crazy. Are you, is this some sort of goof? Are you guys goofing with us? Is this more Pentagon CIA razzing? Because we do not have time. We're in the middle of a, no, we're, I swear, hand to God. A hand to God. This is just crazy. What a small world. Actually, what a regular world. Actually, what a shit world because of us. <laughs> so what do we do? Well, why don't we let our sides kill each other, and then after that, we'll go out for a beer. USA! 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 Yeah. I mean, that is one of the things that I think is amazing. I, I'm not, I will not shit all over Joe Biden, but one of the most amazing things about the Joe Biden presidency is day one, troops back at Syria, right at the fucking border, ready to go. 
Um, so, you know, that's good. Um, but yeah, that is, that's, that's what you get. That's what you get if you're America's foreign policy, where it isn't really foreign policy anymore. It's just coverage for more, you know, just to go make weapons and take oil and all that shit. Anyway, but good for them. Good for them. Uh, okay. Uh, whoa, what the fuck? Uh, Sydney real estate agent Carl Howard, which they would pronounce Carl Howard, uh, accused the Viagra field samurai sword attack. Sydney real estate agent Carl Howard accused a Viagra-fueled samurai sword attack. Well, the truth is, if someone's in a Viagra-fueled samurai sword attack, is the sword a sword or is the sword just the penis that won't deflate? You know what I mean? I think after four hours, you're supposed to call your doctor because you have a legal sword in your pants, uh, is what I've been led to believe. But, okay, so this guy has a huge boner, right? So... Right off the bat, if you see someone with a huge boner coming at you, you're like, ah, I don't know how to handle this situation. And then when that person with the huge boner has a samurai sword, you're like, I don't know what the fuck. He's going to cut it off. I think he's going to cut out of his own dick. Um, and you should see the picture of him. Looks very normal. Looks like a normal guy. But, uh, but no, there must have been something more at play besides Viagra. Is that what Viagra does? Does Viagra make you fucking... Uh, as hard as a puzzle and then just grab a sword? I don't know. That They never say that in the commercials, right? It's the erection lasting longer. If you have an erection lasting the four, longer than four hours, please consult a physician. If while you have that erection, you grab a samurai sword and threaten to kill your neighbor, please don't call your physician. Um, yeah, crazy. Makes Yeah, makes me... I'm going to take some Viagra. and ch I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some Viagra... And I'm going to carry a sword and I'm going to kill an animal and I'm going to throw it on my neighbor's grave because fuck everything. OK. All right. Suggestions. These are your suggestions. OK. Uh, and suggestions. This week's guest suggestion is my buddy Akash Singh. Uh, Akash uh, at Akash Singh. That's S-I-N-G-H. Uh, and Akash has three A's. He's A heavy. He's like a Wheel of Fortune puzzle where you buy an A and you're like, fucking A, I'm glad I bought this shit. It's A-K-A-A-S-H-S-I-N-G-H, -A -A -S -S Akash Singh. He's got the Flagrant 2 podcast with uh, another friend, Andrew Schultz. Uh, very popular. The dude is blowing up. He's fucking hilarious. Follow him. Uh, and now to your suggestions. Again, I've not seen any of these. Oh, zoos. <laughs> zoos. Uh, yeah. Fun, fun jumping off point. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I have a, I'm pretty clear on my zoo policy. Uh, I will not go to a zoo. I don't. I, even when people are like, "You got to go to the zoo. It's amazing." I'm like, "Yeah, it, it's it's good to see the animals, but I, to me, it's not worth being like your life is in this box." Good, you know what I mean? So, uh, so I don't go. But I remember when I used to go as a kid. I used to love it. You know, I mean, I remember when the monkey pissed on the the glass. We lost our minds. Um, you used to get like little plastic figurines made of all the animals. Isn't that great? Go to a zoo where you've just cap you put a bunch of animals in captivity and then also just plastic, get a bunch of plastic of it. It's a win-win because -win, um, that'll end up in a bird's stomach. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel bad for them. I don't feel good. Like I can't go to the pound. I can't go to the, the, the you know, I can never go to the Humane Society um, and look at animals. I can if I'm going to get an animal, but even then I'm like, man, this is fucking brutal. It's like walking through cat jail, and that's just not a good version of me. Like, I come out of there, and I'm like, oh, my God, and they're like, are you allergic to cats? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just can't be around any cats, <laughs> otherwise I lose my fucking shit. Um, but there are also, there's a, there's a, I would, I would even not even call it a zoo necessarily, but there was a place I went to in Australia where they rehabilitate animals. So stuff like that I'm into and, and places where animals have a lot of distance to roam and be like in a natural ish habitat. Yeah. I mean that situations like that I'll go into, but for the most part, yeah, I'm not going to pay the fucking money to go to a zoo and just watch like, you know, a bunch of cheetahs be like, if there wasn't glass here, I would eat your larynx, you know? And you're like, ha ha say cheese cheetah. And he's like, I will eat you. And you're like, <laughs> he can't do shit. Just seems like a fucking weird thing. I would do it if you had to. If you if you had to go in the cage with the animal, then maybe I'd be more inclined to be cool with zoos, because then it would be like, you know, they'd be eating a lot of people. It's a win-win. Uh, the dark side of Midwestern values. I mean, if there was ever a one-act play that I should write, that is the title. 
Welcome to the dark side of Midwestern values. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, well, very polite in the Midwest, you know, very polite. The downside to that, one time I was coming back from uh, Boston to New York, and I was working in New York, and I'd gone to a friend's wedding in Boston, and uh, long story short, I'd taken a good amount of Molly at the wedding. And so uh, the Sunday drive back on the train, the train ride back, my head was not there. My, you know what I mean? It was, I had mush brain. I was all mushed up. And, uh, and I sat across from a very sweet woman from the Midwest. And my brain was like just pink gel. And she was just going like, so what, what, what do you think are the chances this year the Packers go to the Super Bowl? And I was like, in my head, I'm like, ma'am, I am like going to eat a DiGiorno pizza and poop my pants. You get out of the zone. Leave this area. Um, but I also think like, you know, Midwesterners are, they're, like I said, very polite. We like to drink, you know, there's, I would imagine that's a bit of a downside to, to some people, you know, when, uh, the, you know, the amount of, uh, drinking that goes on. It's also, that's another downside because the, the alcohol is so cheap in the Midwest. They're begging you to do shots. You know what I mean? It's like whenever you know what I mean, whenever you go to the Midwest bars, it's always one of those things where they're just like, and every hour we pass around a bunch of really, really heavy jello shots. You're just like, okay, yeah, I'll I'll eat, I'll take that free shit. Um But yeah, I mean I would say sometimes you're just not in the mood for uh the politeness. Sometimes, you know, like everyone says hi. I'm just not used to that. You know, when I and I I'll tell you the other thing, the speed limit drives me fucking crazy. I can't tell you the last time I looked at a speed limit sign in Los Angeles. If I go back to Milwaukee, though, it's, if it's like 35, people are like, let's just do 32 to be polite. You're like, man, what the fuck? Go. Go. But there's always cops there sitting with their speed traps and shit. So, yeah, I would say that's one of the dark sides. Uh, perfect pillow thickness. Well, I'm crazy. So I, don't, I would say most people's perfect pillow thickness is probably too Pillows, maybe fluffy pillows, one hard pillow. I ordered this thing called the Cube. It's just a fucking big, big, it should be called the rectangle. It's like this big, and it is just this long rectangle, and then I put sometimes two pillows on top of it. I, it's a long story to why I'm crazy, but, uh, but basically it's so I don't sleep on my side. So I try to sleep. I, that's what I, I try to sleep like I'm propped up in a hospital bed, just passing out before they put the food on my, my little tray, you know, like that's sort of the level I'm, I'm not kidding. Like you could literally put like an oxygen tank on me and people be like, this fits what happened to him. Um, but yeah, so I try to sleep a little elevated. Uh, so I don't know, but that's one of the things about hotel life, you know, is that you're dealing with a lot of, you're dealing with a lot of problems. What they do in hotels is they're like, we're going to give you one of every kind of pillow, which is good and bad. Cause you know, you're going to have one, but you know, you're only going to have one, you know, whereas like when I get up in the morning and I get out of bed, it looks like I, I'm like Ewan McGregor going through with heroin withdrawals and train spotting. Like there's just sheets are everywhere. There's like a pillow in the wall with a knife in it. I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? You know? But, uh, and then Jose also sleeps on a pillow next to me and he likes a thinner pillow because he's, uh, doesn't know what pillows are. Okay. Also my pillow, best pillow you're ever going to use. Best pillow you're ever going to lose. You use, you just try using the, my pillow. You wake up and you're fucking crazy. Uh, as seen on TV items you saw on TV and nearly fell for it. Nearly fell for it. I fell. I fell hard. I would fall in love. I would fall in love hard and fast. I remember one time I ordered a video called Presidential Bloopers, and it was one of those, it was hilarious. So it was all the, pre just presidents just being fucking idiots, and me and my friends in college would just pull tubes and just watch Presidential Bloopers and laugh. So I ordered it from Life Videos, Time Life Videos. Well, then I get like a month later, they're like wedding bloopers. And I'm like, oh, wedding bloopers, not as funny a blooper, but okay. I didn't realize there were more. So then I called them and tried to cancel. Well, they're like, oh no, you can't call this number to cancel. This isn't the cancel number. I'm like, well, what's the cancel number? And they're like, I don't know what the cancel number is. And I'm like, wait, you're telling me you work for Time Life Video and you don't know the cancel number? Next month, grandparents bloopers. I'm like, Time Life, what the fuck? I don't want any more bloopers, you know? And they start getting worse and worse. Eventually, they're like, weather bloopers. I'm like, what the, f stop sending me these fucking things, you know? 
Like after like three months, it, it was just, it was bananas. They were just like, guys painting shed bloopers. I was like, this is too bloopers. This isn't a blooper reel. Um, but the other thing I ordered was the Ronco food dehydrator. I don't know what it was that spoke to like 11, 12 year old me, but something about the Ronco food dehydrator where you could make your own dried fruit and jerky. I was like, party of one, yes, please. And, uh, and I ordered it. I, I mean, I made one of my parents order it. And yeah, I was using it for a while, you know? I was like putting like jerky, like, you know, meat on the trays. There were like five trays. And then you would put the meat on the trays and you could put fruit on the trays. And you'd, I remember my mother made me keep it in the basement, you know, like my dirty little secret where I'd hide my Rumpelstiltskin device. So just put it in the corner of the basement, you know, and I'd check on it every couple days, see how my jerky and my dried mangoes doing or whatever. And then one day, probably after two and a half weeks, I went down there. I, I don't even really know. My dad and I went down there and we saw it at the same time and it had just melted into itself. It was just a big four or five big plastic trays on top of each other, and you plugged something in and hit a button, but it had just, it had, it, it jerkied itself. It like the Ronco dehydrator was like, I'm going to dehydrate myself. And I was like, you're here to dehydrate other shit. And it was like, I'm fucking out of here. Fuck it. And it just collapsed in itself. And my dad and I went down there, and everything was ruined. And it was just sort of like, oh, okay, I guess that's why you shouldn't... Uh order these things from TV. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I still am a sucker. If I see a, if they, if they show me a pan where they could put like the beaters on it and they go through that, I'll be like, beater free pan. <laughs> yes, please. You got to remember, you got to order pans. We're in a pandemic. Now's the time. Okay. Um, oh God, overly articulate and friendly strangers. Well, I was sort of just talking about that when I was on that train with that, uh, that woman um, going back from from Boston, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I find it the worst on a plane. Um, that's when you're really locked in. You know, I try to give off the vibe that I'm crazy early on a plane ride so that I don't get caught in that. But there's just some times where you're just you're you're, you're bat. You can only fight back so much, you know, you'll just sit next to someone, you know, you just sit down, you'll be like putting your stuff under your seat you know, and then there's just some suave person sitting like aisle, just looks over at you. He's like, I'm Charlie Daniels. You're like, how's it going? He's like, I didn't catch your name. You're like, fuck me. Is this really going to happen? I'm Gareth. Gareth. The hell kind of name is that? It's a Welsh name. You Welsh? No, my, my parents were actually. Weird name. It's actually one of the Knights of the Round Table. You're named out of one of the Knights of the Round Table. Well, no, it no, I'm it's I guess it's an alternate of the round table. The hell you mean it's an alternate of the round table. I don't know. There was like an alternate round table. You can google it, but there was like a second table of knights. What? Yeah, and they just I don't I don't know what they they were like house knights. Like Sir Gareth was just at the house when the knights were out fighting battles. Sir Gareth would just be at home in the castle like, you know, turning over the beds, making sure everybody's, you know, pot that they peed and pooped in was clean and you know making cranberry muffins shit like that that was a round table i don't know if it was a round table i shouldn't even say i'm sure of that it was a table it's like the kids table at thanksgiving oh what do you do for work and you're just like this can't fucking go on i can't keep talking to this fucking person i'm not even a real goddamn knight but uh but yeah i mean i don't know i, I it's hard to get out of you know there's sometimes where people just want to talk you know, and they, 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 they will talk. They will just, they, they don't even need you there. It could just be a mop handle with a bucket and googly eyes on it. And they'd be like, my name's Charlie Daniels. What's your name? What kind of, what kind of line of work are you in? You know, I do insurance. I don't know if you got insurance, but let me tell you something. You don't have enough. You know, they'll just go and go and go. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. The moment you learn Outback Steakhouse started in Tampa, go Bucks. Oh, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> fuck the Buccaneers. Um, the moment you learn Outback Steakhouse started in Tampa. Well, that's not the crazy. That, to me, is not the crazy part about the Outback Steakhouse. The Outback, the Outback Steakhouse starting in Tampa could not be more on brand, right? 
That doesn't seem crazy. The Bloomin' Onion? That's not coming out of a lot of states that aren't Florida. What I find crazy about the Outback Steakhouse is how they just out of nowhere were like, we're Australian, you know? And they're in Tampa Bay. So they just like, were like, it's right, it's the Australian Outback. Come to the Outback Steakhouse. And people are like, oh my God, traditional Australian steaks. Let's go. And so what? So what? Yeah, you pinched you pinched a place, you know, you put some boomerangs on a wall, pretended like Crocodile Dundee visited the place a couple times, whatever. Well, then they went too far, and they came up with the Blooming Onion. The Blooming Onion, uh, their signature dish, the signature Australian dish, an onion deep fried, looks like a bunch of little onion fingers, and you dip it in sauce. I've been to Australia about seven times. Let me tell you something. They do not care for the Blooming Onion. They've never heard of it. They've only heard of it through the Outback Steakhouse, and they're sick of it. It's like Foster's. You know, Foster's are like, Australian for beer. You go to Australia, you're like, I'll have a Foster's. They're like, yeah, but if I piss in your mouth instead. You're like, what, well, fuck? I just like your local stuff. I need something to wash my blooming onion down with. Ow, my arm. Why's that man got my arm? You know? So, yeah, it is. It is I don't know. It's just one of the weirdest. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just do that. You can't just like, I can't just like open a Chinese restaurant and just be like, hey, everybody, who wants some ham and avocado? Just like the Chinese eat. It's called ham cado. You know, you can't just do that. Did you think at one point Australia was like, could Australia just sue the Outback? Can they just sue the Outback Steakhouse? You know? Welcome to Australia versus the Outback. Finally. Um, yeah, so there you go. There you, that's, that's what I think about that. Oh, Gary Busey, pet judge. I just found out about this shit. Gary Busey is now a pet. Now, Gary Busey now has a show where he's a pet judge. It's fucking crazy. It is, I mean, Gary Busey's career makes no real sense. Let me just say this first and foremost. Gary Busey did have a head injury, right? So he's had a head injury, um, but he's also kept working ever since he had it. And yeah, I mean, he's become like a weirder person, you know, but he never ceases to, he does that acronym thing, you know, where like he'll just, everything's an acronym to him. Like, you, you know, he'll just be like, like someone will just be like, Gary, what's the secret to life? He'll be like, Hulk. Hulk is the secret to life. Hulk, having, asking, wheezing, kicking. And you're just like, what the fuck? He's like, Hulk, you know? But uh, but anyway, so he's had one of the weirder careers. I actually know a guy who, who worked on that show, I'm with Busey, and he has a lot of amazing stories. Among them, Gary was still doing drugs during it, allegedly, and he did, and he had, they were shooting in a teepee, and he had blood running down his nose. And so my friend, the producer, comes in, and he goes, hey, Gary, you got... Uh, blood running out of your nose you know he's basically been like stop doing coke and gary Busey goes it's a choice and he goes the blood running down out of your nostril is a choice he goes yep and he's like can we try one without it and he goes sure uh another time they were standing they were arguing on the street and a bus pulled by and gary's arguing and then the bus someone on the bus goes hey nick nolte and gary Busey goes hey how are you um but yeah, so he's, he's a lunatic, you know, but, but now he's a pet judge. I need to see the show because the truth is, uh, th I, th this, I, this is, I would, we, America needs these judges. Let's, Trump should have appointed Gary Busey to a judge, just be a judge somewhere, some lower circuit court or something. Um, but yeah, I don't know what kind of cases Gary Busey's settling either. You know, what kind of pet cases, I guess you just hear from the owners. I'd rather hear from the pets. Look who's talking three style. Um, but yeah, it's fucking weird. It's a weird show, but there's a lot of weird shows and I bet you they could shoot it during COVID. So there you go. Uh, what's the story behind your bracelets, wristbands, man, people are obsessed with those things. Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's not much. I mean, okay. Well, one of them is from a really good friend of mine. My buddy Luke made me this, and this is a bunch of rope that if I ever need it in a pinch, I just take it off. It's like, uh, Wonder Woman's bracelet or necklace, whichever it is. I haven't seen the movie. I'm going off the old one. But so it's like I could wrap this around. And these other two are from uh, experiences of uh, a hallucinogenic nature that I keep wrapped around me to keep reminding me of the goodness I felt at that time. And I promised myself I would never shake. The idea that we are all a collective one. 
that we are all interconnected, that we're all in this galactic soup and stew together, mixing around, and as tough as it may get at times, we need to remember we're all just sharing one big crazy bowl of soup, and we got to chill the fuck out. So, uh, you know, approach people with goodness, kindness, love, and for the love of God, if they look like they took a bunch of molly at a wedding over the weekend, don't fucking talk to them. Okay. Uh, moonshine. Moonshine. I love, I love a good moonshine. Um, yeah, if you've never had moonshine, you uh, do not need to do it. It is really like drinking gasoline, but it's strong shit. You know, like moonshine and absinthe give you a weird drunk. You know, alcohol can make you psychotic in many, many ways. Moonshine's a good path there, you know? And I, I mean, it's, it's strange. I mean, I guess if you're making moonshine because it's a financial choice and you like alcohol, that I understand. If you're just making moonshine because you're like, let's drink petroleum, don't get it, right? I do not get it because it is so fucking mean. Um, you can't gauge it. I, this, I used to valet cars, uh, well, I valeted cars for a long time, but I was valeting in Boston and there was a a Jamaican woman who worked across this building and we would always just catch up like, you know, when I'd see her like once or twice a week or whatever. And she brought me one day Jamaican overproof rum. And she's like, take a sip of that. And I was like, I probably shouldn't. I'm at work, but I will later. So it's overproof. So I'm trying to think what it was. It was probably like, it was like a high proof. It was like 160 proof, which is like, it's a crack. It's a high level of alcohol. And I mean, I had like two sips of it and I was like, what the fuck is going on? So I, so I don't understand moonshine, but unless it's financial, but, uh, why do they even call it moonshine? Is it because you just show your ass or is it? I don't understand. I don't know what it, it should be called butthole juice. If that's what the effect is, I'm sure it is. And I shouldn't have brought that up. We'll just move on because I've made it so goddamn uncomfortable. Um, okay. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, Akash, our guest suggestion for the evening. I know which suggestion is his now based on this one because, um, okay. So we have this joke that we have a, a good text joke that we'll just text back and forth or like leave voice memos or like call and leave voicemails or something. And in it, I always play Frankie Muniz trying to get in touch with Brian Cranston because his career has blown up so much. And it is, I mean, it is like the last time I saw Akash, he was to his uh, girlfriend, now fiance. He was like, we were like, what's up? How's it going? Good to see you. And he was like, you got to do it for her. And I was like, I can't do it. But we would just do, I mean, it just is funny to me that like, you know, Frankie Muniz, I, I, the, the reason why I particularly find it, funny is because Frankie Muniz was by all accounts a dick. Everything I heard is that he's a fucking asshole. And, um, and I saw him on Punked once and he was so crazy. Like, so like, my Porsche! My Porsche! And he's like 15. You know what I mean? So I was just like, well, this guy's a dickhead, so I don't mind mocking him a little bit. You know, so it'd just be like, so it'd just be stuff like where Frankie would call Brian Cranston. So it would just, the exchange would be like this. It would be like, Cranny! Cran Cran! Grandpa! What's going on, my man? It's uh, the Mune, Frankie Muniz. Uh, just checking in because uh, I haven't heard from you. In, I think I've we've been playing a weird game of phone tag, but I think I think I've hit you maybe on the last seven or eight of the tags. So I don't know if you're on Ghoul or what's going on. But um, listen, man, I want to catch up. Uh, I don't know if you would listen to my voicemails. I don't mind repeating them. Um, got a script, hot script, hot script. It's called Breaking Cody Banks. So this is a kind of a, this is kind of a Walter White Agent Cody Banks hybrid. You'll play Walter White like you did on Breaking Bad, your hit character. I'll play Cody Banks, my hit character from two movies. Nobody saw the second one. Nobody even really saw the first one, but still. So we'll play those characters. And I just think it's a perfect hybrid, and it's a perfect match for us right now, Cran Cran. So, okay, Muna's about to be out. Call me. Uh, this is my number. You have it. I've texted it. I faxed it. I emailed it. I've, I actually had a skywriter write it above your home. Call me, Brian. Let's make this happen. All right. This is Munez. Melky in the middle. <laughs> all my love, Bri Bri. Hashtag Hollywood. Munez out. Bye bye. So it's just like that, you know? And then you just keep doing it. Hey, Crick Crick. Mune again. Don't know if you got my last voicemail. I'll keep leaving them. You know, you just keep doing it 
over and over and over. like I'm not forcing you in anything, Brian. You don't. You can have as big or as small a part as you want, but what you can't do is not fucking call me back. I don't mean to swear like that. What is the number you hit to say delete this? It's either one or two. I'll try one. Message sent. Shit. You know. So that. So so I'm gonna. I'll guess our celebrity suggestion at the end of this. But I have a good feeling I know who that one was. Uh, so, yeah. And then every now and then we'll just shoot texts. I'll just be like, Cranston, you still around, my man? <laughs> Loved Godzilla. You know, I would love to be Godzilla. It's just like that. So there you go. Um, okay. Would you rather wear a turtleneck for a year or go without weed for a month? Oh, fuck. What kind of bullshit is this? This is such bullshit. They have nothing to do with each other. Who is putting me in this position? Who is this eclectic billionaire who's like, I've got just the thing? Um, I don't, I mean, is that court ordered? We sent you to either stop smoking marijuana or wear this black turtleneck for a year. Um, I would probably go without weed for a month. I mean, I like smoking weed, but... Come on, I'm not going to walk around like a cat burglar in neighborhoods all the time with a fucking turtleneck on. I mean, people, you know what I mean? A year? Even if I could tell people. It, I mean, that's, that's the problem, right? If people saw me, I'd be like, hey, man, what's with the turtleneck thing? I'd be like, oh, man, I'm doing this. Otherwise, I'd have to stop smoking weed for a month. <laughs> They're like, you can't stop smoking weed for a month? It's like, no way. But here we are. You want to go smoke a joint in the parking lot? You've got to turn the AC on because it's 95 outside, and I have to wear this black fucking turtleneck looking like I move set pieces during a production. But otherwise, I'm ready to do this. Um, so, yeah, to answer your crazy, crazy question... I guess I'd rather go without weed for a month. I mean, I do like taking breaks from weed. Like, I mean, I do my dry January, you know, but I also like, you know, there are times where I feel like I'll have a few, like I'll smoke less weed and I do enjoy that as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this is some arbitrary bullshit. I mean, the, Satan, Satan is behind this question, you know, he should just be stroking his member while he's like, would you rather wear a turtleneck for a year or stop smoking weed for a month? Um, okay, so there you go. Uh, so, no, no, no. Sebastian Gorka impression. First of all, demanding impressions hard. I can't do a Gorka. And break down how full of shit that fake fucking accent is. Well, I don't even know where Sebastian Gorka is really from. Like, he's such a, he's just like, got an accent a bit like this, you know? Like, I don't know what it is. It's like, sometimes you're like, is he Russian? He's like, that's right, it's Sebastian Gorka. Other times, he's in English. He's like, Sebastian Gorka here. I just wanted to tell you a thing or two. So uh, I don't know. I don't know where he's from. Um, I do know he's very full of shit. So it would not surprise me if he had an accent, you know. Or maybe nobody's asked him, you know. We're all just speculating. And then you're like, where are you from? He's like, Arkansas. Hello, Little Rock. Um... Yeah, you know who's got a great Gorka is uh, James Adomian. So if you need if you need your Gorka fill, go to James Adomian. Okay, thank you. Um, cats waking you up early. Uh, you don't understand the problem I'm dealing with. I mean, I've I've alluded to this before, but I my the the door to my bedroom doesn't fully latch, and I just don't give enough of a shit. But what it allows Jose to do is, like, break in like a sheriff with a warrant whenever he wants. I'd be so small, and the door gets kicked open so wide. Like, it goes from totally shut, and I'll be in my bed, so I can't see the floor. So it'll just look like a ghost is about to murder me. And then the door will just kick open, and nothing will come in. And I'm like, oh, great, this is the one. And then he'll just hop up on the bed, you know? But he also now, if, like, he sees that I'm asleep, he will hit me with one of those, like, meows that could give you a heart attack. You know, like, just, like, one that you're like, I did not hear that before today, where I'll just be napping hard, like, uh, and then I'll just be like, meow, and I'm like, what the fuck, why? And he's just sitting there like, made it to hang out. And then he'll leave. So I'll pet him, I'll be like, it's okay. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm like, so great. So I'm up, you're gone. Great, good shit, asshole, thank you. Speaking of which, I could see your asshole as you leave here, which is a nice goodbye. Thank you for that. Glad your tail's so goddamn high, like a flag. Um, 
but yeah, so actually one thing I did, I've, I've, I've prided myself on never squirting him with a water bottle. You know, never, I find that so fucking cruel when people are like, bad, you know, it's like the cat, his brain is very tiny. It's not going to be like, I shouldn't do that. Water stings me. You know, it's like, why this man now hates me. But I did get a spray bottle and I keep it near my bed and I've used it one time when he did that. And I j- it freaked him out. It freaked me out. We were both freaked out. And since then, it's sort of gotten better, but it's still not where it needs to be. Because he eats his first meal at 6.30 a.m., and he l- wants to let me know about it right away. You know, he'll eat that 6.30 a.m. meal, and then he'll be back up on the bed like, meow. I'm like, hey, how was supper, you fucking prick? Um, so, yeah, so it sucks, but. It's also one of those things where, like, right now I don't care because right now, you know, sleep is like, yeah, it sucks when you miss some sleep, but it's also like, who gives a shit? I'll nap today. You know what I mean? I can smoke some weed. I'm in my turtleneck. I'll take a nap. Um, Weirdest place you ever woke up. Uh, I think I might have even told this once, but, um, I mean, I've had a lot. I've had, I had a time in Miami where I woke up and it took me so long to figure out where I was. Like, minutes of me like, think, asshole, think, where are you? And I was looking out, and I'm like, it's somewhere not, where the fuck am I? And I eventually was like, found some materials, and I was like, yes, you've gone to Miami. Um, but one time I woke up in an attic soaking wet, and I had no idea how I got there. Um, I was at a party at my friend's house the night, this is in college, I was at a party at my friend's house the night before, and I jumped in the pool, don't remember this, jumped in his pool, and then apparently was soaking wet, and then went off to like, go take a nap, and I guess I just fucking felt bad about trying to sleep anywhere, maybe I didn't want to get messed with or something, so I just went up to an attic, and I slept in an attic, and I woke up soaking wet, my watch was broken, and then I had to take the T, the train back from Bo- from uh, Revere to the city. And so probably about, we're talking about a 45-minute couple changeover. And I just got on the train soaking wet in like my polyester shirt, wet, you know, d- damp at minimum. And was just like, yeah, I'll just take the train. Um, so that was certainly the weirdest one because I was just, I mean, it was just like, I mean, I really was like, oh, no. I've But I've we, we talked about blackouts last week. Like, I've, I've, you know, I've had blackouts where you wake up. I mean, I've woken up in like girls places before and been like, what the fuck? You know, I remember one time I, I had a one night stand and, uh, I woke up in this girl's place and I was, I was like, I just had no clue what was going on. Like I remember talking to her. I remember a little bit, but I did not remember, uh, going to her place. So I was naked and I woke up and I was like, okay. And I like started to gather my things together. And I wrote a little note that was like, thank you, you know, or something like that. And then I couldn't find my shoes. And so I just left without shoes and I walked home without shoes on. Um, I never got my shoes. It was a trade-off, you know, I was like, okay, we had, you know, that, I, I often do that. After sex, I'll tip people with shoes. So it's not it's not abnormal if you and I have sex for you to wake up the next day and do one of these like wistful rollovers like, Garrett, oh, he's gone. And then you look on the ground, you see two shoes and you go, but he left me two shoes. <laughs> Classic. You know, that's just like my that's my calling card. You know, it's a nice thing to do. Just have someone wake up with a pair and not a pair of shoes for you. A pair of my shoes. <laughs> Old ones probably shoes that I'm like, fuck this, but still it's a nice keepsake. You know, we could turn them into BFF necklaces. I'll wear one of the shoes around my neck. You wear the other one. Very classy, very classy. Um, dedicating a song on the radio to your crush. Oh God, I never did it, but I knew people who pulled that move. Uh, and it seemed effective, you know, it seemed like it was an effective move to just be like, tell it from Laura to Danny. You know, but on the radio, that's the thing. This is on like the radio. So you, I mean, how you've got to like set that up, you know, like if someone tells you to listen to the radio now, you're like, what's going on? You know, someone's like, make sure to listen to 96.4 today. You're like, why? They're like, just listen to 96.4 real soon. Okay. But it's so easy to miss. So it's just like, <laughs> you know, 
Just like, did you listen? Like, yeah, I listened. I mean, I went to the bathroom a couple times. Oh, no, when? Like, during the commercials. That's not the time I was dedicating the song to you, Dan. Josh Christ. What's wrong with me? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Why are you like that? Because the only way I can communicate is through making people th listen to my songs on the radio. Well, maybe if your approach was a little different, you no, you fucked it up. All right, well, I, what, what is that? Will you date me or marry me? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know you that well. Yeah, but then if you'd listen to the song, you would know me so much better now. Yeah, well, I, I missed it. I don't know. What, what was the song? Stairway to Heaven. Okay. It's for you and I. What does it mean? Let's die together. All right, I got to go. I'm out of here. This is over. You know, I used to call into radio stations in high school. That was like my first time getting like strangers to be entertained by me, entertained by me. But I would do uh, like a weather forecast where uh, I had Tourette's, which doesn't, it's not a bit that ages well. Um, but I would also do bits where I would just be like a lunatic. Like I would just do weird stuff. And there was this guy who would pick up my calls and he would, and he got a kick out of me. And so he would let me like, uh, talk on uh, 106.9 The Point FM uh, in Milwaukee. Then I made the move to 94 WKTI. Um, but yeah, it's a nice thing to do. Also, just such a weird thing to do. You know what I mean? But still nice. Cryptids. I don't know what cryptids are. Cryptids. C-R-Y-P-T-I-D-S. Um, I mean, it's a cryptid ask. Cryptid? You mean cryptic? Cryptids. 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 I'm finding out. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so nothing's coming up for your suggestion, um, which is strange. One would think that something would come up for cryptids. But I don't know what cryptids are. So what are they? Oh. Oh, cryptids are like these uh, maybe species. The maybes. Your Sasquatch, your uh, Yeti, your Loch, Loch Ness Monster. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, well, I personally do not believe in them. Um, you know, I mean, there could be a Bigfoot out there. There could totally be a Bigfoot out there. But I just feel like we'd see them. We've seen everything. For the most part, they still discover some species we've never seen before, but that's happening less and less because we're killing them all. Um, I have a friend, Steve Berg, voice of Jose, who is a big believer. And um, we one time, we, we, like we were in, a, I, I have told this, I believe, I, that's, I'm going to stop saying that because at some point that's just going to happen every week. Um, we were in a bar. These guys. People had said that they had caught Bigfoot. Everyone in the news was like, show us the body. They were like, no. And everyone was like, well, that's a really big component in us believing you. So then they're like, okay, fine. So then they sent out pictures, and the pictures literally looked like someone poured water on a Bigfoot costume and left it in a bathtub. But my friend Steve loves to believe, loves to believe. Steve believe, that's what I call him. That's a Trump move. Steve believe, that's what I call him. But... He goes, Reynolds, Reynolds. And I look over and he points to the TV and he goes, we got him. We got him. Like this Bigfoot outfit sitting in a damp tub with no bones or structure to it at all was the body of bin Laden or something. He was like, we got him. Um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, the Loch Ness, honestly, the Loch Ness Monster is the one I would believe in the most. But Jesus Christ. Just drain the thing a little or something, right? Until you find, like, some huge flipper and then just fill it back up again. Um, okay, cryptids. Good to know what that is, though. Oh, God, the Hanforth Parish Council Zoom meeting. If you've not seen this, I'm trying to remember what her name is. The woman's name is Jackie Weaver. You do not have that authority, Jackie Weaver. It's this, tr it's this perfect... It's the perfect... English group, English people in a group with authority having an argument over minutiae where egos flare 
and it's just five minutes of pure English argument until this this very demure woman named Jackie Weaver just kicks this guy off that has no authority. Uh, she has no authority to do that, I guess, but she does it because she's like, fuck this dude because he's being an asshole. And it's quite a fallout. Uh, so it is just, honestly, English people on a Zoom meeting is good for me. Old English people on a Zoom meeting is great for me. Old English council members on a Zoom meeting where egos are flaring, give me more. I love it. Give me seconds. I'll eat this shit. Um, so it's worth watching, for sure. Um, oh, Governor Evers proposed legal weed in Wisconsin. Well, yeah, I mean, he should, and they should, and it should be nationalized. The idea that marijuana is still looked at as a class one drug or um, anything that should be considered a narcotic is fucking crazy, you know? I, to me, it's like, I, I don't understand, like, the, dr marijuana some places carry, like, there are people in lifetime sentences for pot. Lifetime sentences for pot. Now, even if you're dealing pot, think about what the drug does to people. It makes them not do shit. That is what weed does. Now, I'm not saying you should be allowed to smoke weed and drive a car or anything like that. But if I'm smoking a joint in the privacy of my own home, guess what? It's not going to fucking bother you. That's how I feel. That I feel like laws should be based on that. If it doesn't infringe upon your existence, who gives a shit? That's when it comes to your sexuality, whatever, uh, you know, whatever sex you want to be, what, whatever, who you want to fucking have sex with, who you, what, what you want to smoke, what you want to drink, what, you know, any, any of that shit, all that should be freedom of choice. If it does not infringe upon anyone else, if it never steps on anyone else's existence, who gives a shit? I don't give a shit what you do in your home. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? As long as it doesn't bother me. So weed should be legal. Weed should be nationalized. It should be, I mean, it's taxed. It makes a fucking shitload of money. It helps people. It doesn't, doesn't help people be high. You know, it, it reduces seizures in children. Certain parts of it reduce seizures in children. CBD, if you ever thought that I think my mother would be fucking to asking me where to get CBD, you know what I mean? Like weed, something associated with weed. I take CBN, which is such a great uh, sleep aid. There's so much goodness to it. I mean, if you, honestly, I don't, I'm not calling for this, but if you're going to make one thing illegal, booze or weed, well, which one causes more fucking societal damage? Booze, 100%. Booze, 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 booze. You know? Nobody's ever smoked a joint and thought, I'm going to go to that bar and show that bartender a thing or two. Nobody has. That's someone drunk. Someone high? I'm going to go home and smoke a thing or two. You know? It's just very different. So... I would say they should do it. I hope the Badger State does it. I fully support it. You should fully support it even if you don't smoke fucking weed because it helps make money for your country and it helps alleviate the stress of a lot of people. There's a lot of NFL players or a lot of professional athletes who would not have opioid addictions if they were able to use marijuana, recreationally, whatever, med medicinally, whatever it is. But they should be allowed to. Giving a guy some sort of weed treatment versus giving him Vicodin or OxyContin, come on, it's no fucking brainer. Uh, choose one of your accents to be stuck with for the rest of your life. Ooh, uh, probably just Irish to upset the Irish, you know, I, I would, I would like that, you know, just to constantly be like, look, you don't understand. They put a curse on me. So I can't fucking talk with any other accent other than this one right now. You're telling me that you can't fucking talk without that bloody accent. I'm telling you that I've been assigned this accent. For the rest of my life. You're not just taking a piss out of us, are you? If I was taking a piss out of you, I would fucking stop it by now. But I'm not. I'm on it. It's a sincerity. I can't stop talking like this. You quit making fun of our nationality, mate. I'm not making fun of your nationality, mate. It sounds like you're making fun of our nationality, mate. Look, I don't know why it's getting so heated. I'm not trying to make fun of your nationality. All I know is I met a wizard. He told me I could either fucking give up weed for a month, wear turtlenecks for a year, or be stuck with an Irish accent for the rest of my life. What kind of fucking wizard is this? I don't know. He said his name was Daniel. Well, that's quite of an Irish name. He might have been an Irish guy. Why didn't you take the turtleneck? Just seemed like a weird fucking look for a year, you know? Turtleneck for a year? Yeah, I suppose that would be a little odd. You're still smoking weed? Yeah, I'm still smoking weed. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I said, I said no. I said no to the turtleneck and I said no to the marijuana. So here I am just fucking, you know, in the accent jail, as it were. You're not going to say potatoes, are you? No, never. All right, you're all right with us then. Get the car, Danny. Danny, you drive. Another Danny. 
Hold the door open. We're out of here. See you later. Uh, Tara, potatoes. What'd you say? Poof, smoke bomb. Smoke bomb. Gone. Or Scottish. Scottish would be good too. Oh, I'm in a prison. It's my mouth. I can't help it. Someone help me. Freedom, freedom, freedom. You know, something like that. So there you go. There you go. Uh, jams, jellies, preserves, and marmalade. Uh, yes, all things that I don't get, care for. Uh, but uh, some people do. You know, some people, mu- I mean, enough people must love jams and jellies because anytime you get a to go order that's breakfast oriented in any way, you know, you can even just get like, I'll just have four eggs over medium. They're like, how many jams or jellies should we put in the to go bag? They're like, I just 30. Maybe he wants to put some strawberry jelly on his eggs, you know? Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's always very strange to me. I only time I'll eat jelly is when it's peanut butter related. Marmalade always freaked me out. Even as a kid, even now I'll eat marmalade. I'm like, this is not, no, this is not right. Um, but jams and jellies, you know, they're okay. But again, I mean, I, I just, it's not that time anymore. You know what I mean? I don't, I just feel like it's not time. Like it feels like a different era when someone was like, Clark, bring your friends in, come get some preserves. We're going to put them on the whole wheat bread. You know, it just feels like that was a different time. I also am one of those people who like, if I, I don't like crunchy, like pieces in the fucking thing I'm eating. You know what I mean? Like, I don't love like eating something and then like having like bits. You know what I mean? Bits like, yeah, yeah, bits. I need a like grape jelly. Ugh. You know what I mean? There's no, there's, it's just total smooth consistency. I'm sure it's made out of the worst shit and no grapes, but Concord grape jelly, that's the only one I'll fuck with, okay? Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Oh, except for KY marmalade. I don't know if you've ever had that. I know KY makes a jelly, but a lot of people don't know that KY also makes preserves and it makes a marmalade. KY marmalade, it's unbelievable. It's great fuck juice. KY marmalade, it's great bang juice. Okay, bird watching is the next suggestion. Bird watching. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm trying to think if that's anything I'd have any interest in doing. And the answer is that I would not. Uh, I do love nature. I do get a kick out of birds. But, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. There's just so many other animals that I would spend my time looking around for versus birds, you know? And it's also hard to see. I remember, I remember you've ever seen the... For the first planet Earth, the first series of planet Earth, when they, they find this, it's unbelievable, but it's a mating dance between two birds, and as usual, the female is just like, what do you got? And the male's like, here's the thing I've worked my whole life to present you with. And it's this dance, and he's jumping, and he's jumping, but then he, he like turns his stomach like neon, and he's like, it's just like crazy colors, and it's just, you're overwhelmed with the fluorescence of the whole situation, blue lighting up, bouncing around, looks like he's a blue top, you know what I mean? And you're watching, you're like, holy shit, this is crazy. And then you're like, I wonder how long that took to get. Well, I eventually watched a documentary on the making of Planet Earth, and th- these people would have to sit in these little fucking boxed huts for months, months! sometimes to get the shot months just sitting in i mean what are you doing what could you possibly be doing in a little shack like that you know what i mean what i mean you can't smoke you got to be careful with what you eat you probably can't even jack off because it'll probably you know there'll be like some snow leopard that'll be like no this way and you're like oh it was just a little calm um but yeah so i don't know i i yeah it's, it's not a thing for stamp collecting bird watching Again, it feels like they're in the era of like jams and jellies and marmalades. Um, it just not a not a not a huge get for me. Not something I'm like, yeah, I gotta see that bird. Cause I mean, the upside is you see the bird, and you're like, oh my god, I saw the bird. So, you know, that's why I only go to zoos to see my birds. God, I love birds in zoos. Is there a better animal to put in a zoo than a bird? You know, where you're like, you know how you used to have the whole sky? Yeah. Well, now you just have that net. Enjoy. Um, so, yeah, I would not fuck with bird watching. Fridge magnets. I'll tell you, you want to be a fridge on my magnet. If you want to be a magnet on my fridge, not a fridge on my magnet, although when you move your fridge, you do find magnets underneath it. You want to be a magnet on my fridge, just be given to me. That's all it takes. I don't care what your cause is, what it is, you will end up on the fridge. 
Best fridge magnets, poetry, alphabet, those are fun. But I have a ton of them. I mean, I just have, I have like, I have the alphabets, but I don't have enough of the alphabets to spell any word other than like wad or like dad. You know, you can't do too much with uh, my options up there. They're really just magnets. But, but yeah, I'm with fridge magnets. I, I still, I'm a still pro- a proponent of uh, putting things on your fridge. You know, I don't know why. Man, what do I have up? I just have pictures. I don't know. Why is it? It's a weird thing, isn't it? It's a weird place to be putting this sort of keepsake shit. You know, you've got like your wall where you've put all your things and you're like, this is the aesthetic I'm after in my home, you know, and then you go to the fridge and it's just like, also, here's a bunch of papers and four pictures and then a receipt and something I got to remember and a list and then a birthday card and then a picture of my friend Grant. You know, it's like a weird, it's a weird thing we've done, but I stand by it. But yeah, it does not take much to be, you could be, I mean, if you're a plumber and you're like, if you ever need anything, may never call you again, you're going to end up on the fridge, you know? So, uh, yeah, I love a fridge magnet. Gimme, gimme. Teaching your parents how to use tech. Well, I mean, that is fucking crazy. I mean, honestly, like literally every time I FaceTime with my mother, this is what the FaceTime's like. Okay. I'll do me and I'll do my mother. Hey mom, how are you? Mom, can you move can you move the camera a little bit? Have I got it? No, because I still can't see you. I can't see you. Do I have it now? No, I would be able to see you. If how's that? That's just the ceiling. Is that better? That's your feet. Oh gosh, I didn't know how to get it back. Well you hit pause to touch the screen again. Oh, I've touched it twice. Don't touch it twice. That's a repause. Touch it once. There we are. How are you? That's just the top of your bangs. Oh, is that better? You flipped it around. Can you flip these around? You can flip these around, and you have flipped these around. There we are. That's it. No, it isn't. It's still flipped around. There we are. That's better. I just see blackness now, and I don't know how. Could you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. I can see you. I cannot see you. I can just hear you. There we are. Is that more like it? No, it's not. Gosh, I didn't know what I'm doing wrong. Well, we've done this like a thousand times, like 30,000 times, and at times you've, you just hold it at your face. Is that right? No, not like that. That's again, that's not. How's that? Is that closer? No. There we are. Now it's pointed right at me. Yes, but your thumb is over the thing. Your thumb is over the lens. Who is it? Yes, no, your thumb is over. Just move your thumb a little bit. There we are. That's better. Now the pa- it looks like the palm of your hand. It's hard to tell. It just looks like a red sun. Oh, there we are. That, that'll do it. That's better. Yeah, and then a little higher. There we are. Hello. Hi, Mom. How are you? I've got to take this other call. Ta-ta. You know? My father's pretty good. My father knows his shit for the most part, but but uh, but yeah, my mother. Like I do a Zoom once a week with my mother for the pandemics thing, and it has never. It, let, let me tell you, it's never started like this. Hey, all right, that was easy. Never happened. It's always just her like. And I'm like, oh fuck, you know, touch c- touch audio. It's just like that. So, you know. Okay, Zoomer. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Army Dahmer Hammer. So, look, I'm not going to be one of these people who comes out and condemns Army Hammer for enjoying uh, and suggesting that he eats women's ribs that he's dating, you know, because ribs are delicious. And I would imagine the ribs of a human would be good. And sure, a human female. Yum, yum, yum. Um, no, Army Hammer sent a bunch of fucking crazy texts and then defend it. I just, I, the, honestly, having weird thoughts and saying weird shit like that, it does not, is not crazy. I mean, that has happened throughout the history of existence. But in this day and age, to be a famous person and leave that digital footprint, that's fucking crazy, you know? But yeah, Army Dahmer Hammer, that's a pretty good name. Because um, he would. He, he, called the, he called the women kittens, and he talked about how he was going to drink their blood and eat them. And, uh, and is it just, Army Hammer seems so normal to me. Like he seemed like, like he seemed like he had trouble playing things that weren't like kind of normal. I think he's a good actor. I mean, shit, he's a fucking great actor. He's walking around like a normal dude who's actually a vampire. But, uh, but I, I like thought he was like kind of, you know, like normal and not that, not to say that he's not normal, but you know what I mean? Like it just, it just seems a little off brand for him to be like suggesting. And he just got divorced. I mean, can you imagine if you're. You know, the person you just broke up with and have kids with, you find out is like 
a human rib eater or at least suggest it, you'd be like, how about we just do every other weekend army? He's like, why? Come on. If you need a hand with the kids, I'll eat it. What? If you need a hand with the kids, let me know, I said. Come on, I don't want to eat your hand. Um, it's weird that his name's Army, too, and he likes to eat parts of bodies, right? How'd you get the name Army? I ate a bunch of people's arms. Thought maybe you served. <laughs> they were served to me. Okay, Army, take care. Going to take this elevator. I'll step in, too. I'm actually on the floor I need to be. Same here. Okay, very good. Here. Okay. Ho oh, the HOA, homeowners associations. Yeah, I well, I'm not a homeowner, so I don't know, but they seem fucking heated. They seem like that uh, Zoom conference call we were talking about before. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I, I it's I mean, owning a home seems like a huge pain in the ass. Seems like a lot of benefits to it, but it also seems like a huge pain in the ass. So, um, but yeah, I don't really know too much about the ins and outs of the HOA. Um, I mean, it it is weird to have like. You know, you buy a place and then there's like a group of judges who are like, well, you need to do this. You know, it's just a little strange because you're like, I bought it. And they're like, no, it's ours to decide what it is for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a homeowner, like I said. High school theater kids. Well, I was a high school theater kid, but I was a high school theater kid kind of by default. Like I did theater because I just didn't know what else to do with my life. You know, and eventually someone was like, you should do theater. Because I was like, what do I do? I'm not great at soccer. and I'm a Fucking idiot. And they were just like, oh, you do theater. Um, but it was an intense scene for sure. I mean, you know, people got people get intense. And then I think like most groups in high school, you know, once you once you're established as a clique and people start calling you a clique, then you're like, yeah. Like, I remember we had a clique of people called like the couch people uh, because they were made of pillows. No, because they would just sit on this couch all the time and like so and they would just be like hogging up the couch and so we'd be like oh the couch people and then they heard we called them the couch people and then we're like we're the couch people and you're like oh no you've taken the name that was supposed to be negative and you've turned it into a positive oh, progressive of you um but yeah it was weird i mean the, the I, I the uh a high i don't want to be careful because i don't want to say someone who i worked with in the theater department in my high school would let me smoke cigarettes in their office in high school. <laughs> so I was like, well, look, any scene where I can do this shit is fucking great, you know? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I had an affinity for the theater people, um, and it definitely gave me a group of people to be around. But even when I was in the theater group, like, they, a lot of them did not like me. I, it's very, again, I mean, my life is kind of blurry for some reason. It's like... In high school, I just, I feel like maybe just because of a lot of bullshit, I just don't remember a ton. But for whatever reason, I wasn't like learning my lines as well as I should. And I wasn't trying as hard. I did once the show started. Then I was like, let's fucking do this. But I think everyone just kind of had doubts about me and just didn't really think I was much. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe I'm just so overanalyzing myself. But, uh, but yeah, so there you go. All right, here we go. The World Beard and Mustache Championships. Well, I would be involved. I had a beard going, and this great guy offered to send me um, a beard kit. And so I'd kind of been waiting on this beard kit, and then like two days after I shaved, he sent it to me. But, yeah, I mean, I, if you could grow one of those frothy handlebar beard, awesome. Do it. Guys like me, we can't. We just got to, like, you know, deal with what we have. My friend Dean has a beautiful beard, and he enters beard competitions. And he does well. He's got like, he looks like a Greek god. He is, uh, he just has like, but he will do, you should follow him, Dean Banowitz. You should follow him. And he just does all this crazy shit with his beard. He has a 4th of July beard. He has a St. Paddy's beard. He has Valentine's Day. So he's like a beard. And, you know, I just am kind of a guy who's like, ah, I don't have a riser. Um, would you rather perform as a magician, ventriloquist, or juggler? I mean, I would say ventriloquist because it's the closest to stand-up. Magician, yeah, but I'm just thinking of, like, all the work with those tricks. Man, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, I can't. My friend Justin is a magician, and you go to his house, and it's just, like, everything is magic-based and just all over. And, you know, he's just got so many. Just, it, it, But it's been a lifelong passion of his. I, th I think I'd go the easy route ventriloquist, you know? 
I mean, because it's not that hard. If you could just admit that you're gonna use, you're gonna have to say M and like other a couple others like S, you know. If you can, if you can just admit that every now and then you have to say like an S or an M, you're okay, you know. So it'd be very easy. I'd just be like, "Hey, hand, how you doing today?" Not bad. It's easy to jerk off earlier. Hey, talk about that stuff. That's bedroom stuff. Hey, this guy's an asshole. Trust me. Don't you say that. Someone help me. The left hand is trying to escape, too. All right. You know, you see what I mean? You could just kind of do this for a little while. That's how you tell you. Help me. Help me. I had trouble. I need your help. If those guys over there see me through the neighbor's window, they'll know that I need your help. And I do need it. It's a long, long story, but I'll get into it now. Oh, no. I moved my list for the B and the M. Oh, fuck her shit. So you go. Uh, writer's block. Um, well, I have a writing partner. Very helpful for writer's block. Um, but, uh, but sometimes writing dialogue can be very difficult or just you can feel overwhelmed by the plot and the mechanics and you've got a lot to do, you know, or there's a scene where you've got to like come up with a bunch of new shit because it doesn't work or something. You can get a little blocky. But I've never, knock on wood, really been like, what should I do? Like, you know, I'll take a break, smoke a little weed, come back, address it again. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I feel like it is a real thing. Uh, I've not experienced it on a level. You know, I have, my, I have my sweet baby Evan Mann, and he helps me uh, get through any of that stuff. So it's more like a writer's bump. You know what I mean? Okay. Perfume commercials. Yeah, what the fuck is with perfume perfume commercials? I can't even say it. What the fuck is with perfume commercials? Why are they like that? They're so dramatic. It's a scent. And everything's black and white and dramatic, you know? Or or it's just so, or it's just like two models just like, you know, fornicating in a tub. And then it's just like tub, a new scent. It's like what? It's so serious. Can't there be like a goofy perfume? You know, not like Goofy the animal, you know, the, the animated animal. But like, I mean, I mean, that would be a weird one, right? Like, hey, you all smell like me? He's like, no, Goofy, we don't. I smell like poop and uh, Weetabix. You're like, what the fuck? How is that possible, Goofy? Um, but yeah, I mean, they're just so serious, you know? Like, why, why is it? It's because it's fashion adjacent that people are just like, this is so serious. You're going to smell. Like Johnny Depp, don't fucking crack a smile, you know? Like, I remember the first time I saw that Johnny Depp fragrance, Sauvage. I swear to God, I thought it was called Sausage. I was like, what? Johnny Depp came out with a sausage smell? Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just classical music. Pearls drop on the tiled floor, black and white tiles. They spread everywhere. Existence. Then someone runs up a staircase, tries to open a door. It's locked persistence you know then they run down the stairs and a man enters the room he's got his shirt off he's out of breath she turns around runs away as she's running resistance you know just all that then all of a sudden you just they embrace they start making out she drops a, a mop for some reason and then it's just like consistence a new fragrance from ralph lauren what the fuck? What does it smell like? That's part of the problem is they can't convey what this shit smells like. That would be a lot more effective. Just have some guy who's just like, Tss. yeah, it smells like an uh, apricot a little bit. And um, kind of got like a, uh, you remember CK1? It's like apricot and CK1 kind of mixed into a mist a little bit. You know? Tss. Oh, this one I like. What the hell is this one? Champagne. Yeah, it kind of smells like champagne. But it's also a little strong. And uh, some of it's sticking on my hand. So I ain't so sure about this for it. Like, that would be an effective campaign. You'd be like, oh, I know what it smells like. Instead of just being like, oh, I just know that two people in a mansion fuck to this naked. Consistence. Um, okay, and I think that's it. That is it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess that uh, uh, Akasha's suggestion was... <laughs> Frankie Muniz and Brian Cranston uh, voicemails. Just because if it was anyone else's suggestion, uh, then they've wired my home or something. And I am 
right. It was that. Uh, shocker. Um, all right. Well, th- well, let's say thank you very much to Akash for leaving uh, the, uh, the impression of Frankie Muniz. Um, I have, uh, we have a dollop show on March 18th. I have a stand-up show the following week, March 25th. Um, there's another avail show coming up soon. I don't remember exactly where it is. There's a couple of really great pandemic pandemics in the tube, not pandemics. Don't worry about that. Um, but there is, uh, there, we have a one tomorrow. That's pretty great. And then I think the one the following week is pretty great too. So go to my YouTube, subscribe and like the videos and all that stuff. And then, yeah, watch, watch the pandemics. They're pretty good. Um, merch and stuff. Uh, people are still wearing merch. There's pins, there's shirts, there's posters, there's all that shit. Go to garethrollins.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, as usual, uh, try to take care of yourself and, uh, let's get, uh, the star out here, shall we? Oh, there we go. There we go. There he is. There we go. Okay. Well, hold on. Let's, let's lower this a little, shall we, Jose? Let's lower the mic a little bit. It's okay. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Okay. Here we go. Here he is. Here's the man of the hour. My little, my little man. Oh, yeah. My little man. There he is. Look at me. So confused. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hey, my friend. Hey, we're pals. And this won't end. Cause we're besties. Cause we're besties. Hey, pal. Hey, sweet amigo. Do you wanna go to Antigua? Or should we stay right here together? Where the weather is as good as we can make it together, together. The weather, forever and ever. We will weather the storm, cause we love each other like popcorn. You're my best man, you're white and black. We are two friends and we're not whack. We like to stare at each other's hair. And say beware, that's not fair. Remember when we said that, don't forget to look at the camera. That's right, we did it. We're together, and you're so happy. And I can tell that you're not going to get scrappy. Because you like my lappy. You're moving a little. You're like a kittle. I love my little boy. He's a little toy. You want to say anything? Say something to the folks at home. Don't be rude, even at YouTube. Come on, Jose, look that way. That's my boy and my baby. We're doing it right, out of sight. Say goodnight. Hey, goodnight. Goodnight, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Goodnight, goodnight. Goodbye, goodbye, everybody, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Farewell, farewell, everybody. Get out of here! Yeah! His name is Gareth! Hence why it's Gareth!